any day of the week, yes? Mm -hmm. Because we yanked that limit out of the way, we don't have any trouble. Gee, I wonder how I'm going to integrate this next. <laughs> Here's my problem. How do you integrate from negative infinity to infinity? A to B. Yeah. So where does the limit go? All real numbers? Do you split it up? Yes, we can. The integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x squared would be the integral from negative infinity to something. We can choose any value we want, yes? Yes. Then we can pick up at that value and continue to infinity, true? True. Now, where would you like to stop this particular integral? One. I can go from negative infinity to one, and then from one to infinity, true? True. And then I can calculate each of those individually. I'm just going to stop at zero. Why should I go all the way to one? True. Zero is my favorite number. If I'm going from negative infinity to positive infinity, zero is somewhere in between. Fair enough? But the idea is, yes, I can break it up into two integrals. Then I just need to integrate one and then integrate the other one separately. For the first one, I can take the limit as a goes to negative infinity. The integral from a to, do you want to go to zero or to one? Zero. Okay. Zero. I could have done the one. Zero, zero. Oh. Yeah, Maybe I just, zero. that's me being lazy. That's good. E to the x, one plus e to the x squared. Plus, then I can take the limit zero. as b goes to infinity. The integral from zero to b of e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the x squared. Fair enough? Now, this is a cute example that happens to be an even function. Because it's an even function, I don't have to really integrate both sides. But I could integrate either side. Sound OK? That's all right. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a u sub. And I'm going to do two of them. The limit is not affected by my substitution. What would be a good substitution here? Any thoughts? So if u is 1 plus e to the x, notice a is in place in x. We would go at 1 plus e to the a to 0. Are we feeling good with that, my friends? If u is 1 plus e to the x, du would be e to the x dx. That's just du over u squared. That is a nice integral. But we will change our limits. Whoops, sorry, I messed up the upper limit. What is e to the 0? And 1 plus e to the 0? Oh, okay. That, okay. That yeah, that other number oh, should be a if 2. If you did the 0, if you want, to be 1 plus 1 is 2, then yep. square, it will funnel oh, no, the square because the u part of it. Correct. The u squared part will take care of that. But the upper limit should have been 2. Shame on me. I messed up that calculation. Notice on the other side, same u substitution, right? Same u squared, same du. The only difference is when I plug in the bottom, I get a 2 down here for the bottom limit and a 1 plus e to the 2b or 1 plus e to the b for the upper limit. Fair enough? Or does that look right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So same thing's going to happen. Limit as a goes to negative infinity of negative 1 over u evaluated from 1 plus e to the a to 2. 
Now, what I see happening there is I'm calculating a value. B is going to infinity in the second integral. I'm still going to call it negative 1 over u, but this is going from 2 to 1 plus e to the b. Cool? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I can't believe I did both of them together. This is just fun. First, I get a negative 1 over 2 minus a negative, so plus, sorry, let me highlight, 1 over, and I've got 1 plus e to the a. I'm just using my limits and I'm just being careful. I'm going to start with a negative 1 over 1 plus e to the b minus a negative 1 over 2. So far, so good? So do we combine them so that the one has cancelled? Well, no. It is what it is. Be careful. What happens as a goes to negative infinity here? e to the negative 100, e to the negative 1,000. E over negative Yeah, this is 1 over e to the 100, 1 over e to the 1,000. So this e to the a is getting closer to 0. Does that make sense? So the denominator is 1 plus 0. 1 over 1. So what I have is negative a half plus 1. This gives me negative 1 half plus 1. Plus. Now let's look at the other limit. This b is going to infinity, yes? Take a look at this. This is e to the 100. e to the 1,000. What's happening to this fraction? Turning into 1. What's e to the 100? e to 1 is 0 or 1? e to the 100. What's e to the 100? Okay, e to the 1 is 2.67. Oh. So it would already be 1 over 3.67, right? If it's e to the 10 or e to the 100, this denominator is getting very, very, very big, mm -hmm. which means the fraction 1 over that very big number is getting very, very, very small. So that becomes zero. This becomes 0 plus 1 half. This integral converges to 1. This integral actually converges to 1. It's a probability density distribution is what we would call it. Now, remember, these are just classroom examples that I'm using. I wanted to use this 